ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the CCN News Media On Point with uh, Sandra Campbell. And she's going to, she wants to talk about um, the mass murders that have taken place since January of this year. Now, I don't know, but it just seems like that's an awful lot of people, 129 incidents. That's scary, y'all. So what is it? We're not eating the right foods. We're not drinking the right liquids with not enough water. What is it that is causing people to go out and kill people in groups like that? I mean, you can't be mad at everybody in the group. You probably don't even know everybody in the group. Well, <clears throat> well, what, as, as people who are considered believers, we were told that this stuff was going to happen. Prophecy is being fulfilled. You know, when the disciples asked Christ, when are you coming back? And he told them, I don't know, because my daddy have not revealed it to me. But you're going to have pescanists. You're going to have mamas against daughters, daughters, sons against fathers, vice versa, wars and rumors of wars, plague. Yeah. And, and it's true. Okay. I, I use my house, my house as an example. My oldest daughter and her mother don't get along. And when I saw her mother day before yesterday, she said, well, I am not speaking to my daughter. I'm sitting there like, what the hell is wrong with you? That's your child. Well, I'm not speaking to her. And then when I talked to my daughter, well, I'm not speaking to my mom. She, she won't let me live my life. And then I sit back. Excuse me, as a as a veteran, there are wars and rumors of wars. Then there's earthquakes all around the world. Tell me about and it. so we're told as believers, we should not get upset that all this stuff is happening around us because it was predicted that it's going to happen. But the one thing about all this, we are human beings. Yeah. And because we are human beings, we are touched by this stuff because it's an emotional orangutan that make us say, can you believe these folks are doing this crazy stuff? Yeah. And the girl want to be a guy who did this And show. the guys want to be girls. The girl. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Have they been drinking the wrong Kool-Aid? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you were born a male, mm -hmm. then obviously that is what you're supposed to be. If you were born a female, then that is what you're supposed to be. Now, I know there are some, some people born morphodite. They got both sex organs, but and they get to choose what they want to do. But it's like, when are we going to wake up to the fact that we are spirits first? Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, we're spirits first in, mm -hmm. in these bodies. So that's how you connect with the Lord. You're spirits first. And when this body lays down and returns to the dust, you're still going to be here. Your DNA says you've been here all along. Come on. What, what say you? Uh, Dr. Jackson, you've been on the longest. What say you about uh, why you think these uh, mass murders take? What's, what's in the people's minds that they would just go in some place and just kill a bunch of people they don't know? I, I don't know. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of news. That's what I do. Listen to a lot of news. And uh, no one has no, there's no one specific answer because you have a variety of types of shooters. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, um, 
like those mass killings, they're a little bit different than what happens like in, in places like Inglewood or Austin, because those are, you know, this those are different types of mentalities that are working, I think. You know, uh that gang violence and all the other stuff that comes into play, you know, and whereas yes. uh that those yes. mass shootings. Yes. Those are altogether different. So you got you got when you when you say um there's no there's no one specific reason. You gotta find out what group are you talking about and 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 you know, maybe try to figure it out. I don't I don't really know. Uh it's it's, it's so scary, you know, that it's sociopaths. They, yes, 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 sociopaths. Yes, they are. You know, and uh, uh, I, I really than, don't we better figure out something to do because uh, no telling, you might be in in a Walmart or or uh, one of the other stores uh, shopping, and then all of a sudden somebody shows up with guns. Yeah. And what, what I do what believe are you, what are you gonna do when that when and if that should happen to you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, I ah, know. Uh, I do ah, know that that uh, Biden people like Biden is right about you know like you don't need those. Weapons that's made for a battlefield to be in civilian life. I do agree with that. You know, you don't need those high capacity, you know, because of what they said that they, they found out that Devalde, when they had to kill it, those the cops were scared to go in there because because the guy had more power, more manpower, more, more foul power than he did. Yeah, whereas his last one, them guys was equipped, you know, so they 14 minutes and it was over with. You know, well, so, but I believe, you know, the, the first one of the things I do agree with, uh, get those uh, things off the streets, you know, because uh, you don't have a chance. Okay, so uh, welcome to the show, uh, Karen. Welcome to the show, Naima. Welcome to the show, Sandra. Hey, guys, I mean, this is a very, very touchy subject, 129 mass murders since january what the heck is going on what are what are folks doing out there i mean our kids growing up they they grow up in our houses and they 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 don't like us or whatever and they they go come back and they want to kill us and and or they go to the schools and they want to shoot up everybody what what is causing this this uh this situation what do you guys think well, we got to do something about this. This We can't just talk about it and not do anything about it. I don't know what we can do, but we need to do something. Well, you know, um, one one popular thing, and they say this with a lot of respect to a lot of different things, is you cannot legislate people's minds, right? So you yes. cannot... You cannot put legislation in order that that would change people's thought process or what they think to do. But I can tell you what you can do. OK, uh, I don't it doesn't matter about what what the people were thinking about when they did it. Why were they able to do it is a question. Number okay. one, they had access to these these weapons. Uh, they had access to this high firepower and they were able to go into a school and 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 use what these weapons were created for, and and, and they they the politicians always say, well, uh, thoughts and prayers, and uh, why would you take guns away from law-abiding citizens? Well, no, uh, you you have to get your head out the clouds, and and realize that the the, the law-abiding citizens don't need those weapons. Now, they say they need the weapons. They say the Second Amendment. Well, that's a grave misrepresentation and misunderstanding of the law anyway, because the Second Amendment is only in the case that the government tries to encroach upon the rights in, in, uh, in the, what is it, the rights of the citizens. Uh -huh. That has not happened, as far as I'm concerned, to the, to the level that everybody needs to have a gun. <laughs> Furthermore, yes, every, every, they, they say everybody can have a gun. Well, no, that's a falsehood, too, because... What mm -hmm. main community okay. Okay. is not does not have access to the same weapons that other communities do? The black community. So it, it, when you when they speak about these, everybody should have access to a gun and all this other stuff to try to bring some falsehood of equality. And they say thoughts and prayers. It's simply just a cover up because it's a cycle. And it, we just mass shooting thoughts and prayers, 
do nothing, complain about nothing being done, back to normal. It's just a cycle, and it continues and continues, and that's how we end up at the end of the year having thousands of school shootings or thousands of mass shootings and thousands of murders that, that could have been avoided a long time ago, a long time ago. Wow. See, TJ, you got to hurry up and uh, become one of our elected officials and change all this stuff so we can live a better life. We need more of you. Can you please manufacture a few more folks with your kind of intellect? I love that. Karen, I see you smiling. Sandra, you got your hand up. You got something to say. Sandra? Good evening. Good I'm evening. just trying to make sure you're finished. Um, one thing about, I think the problem with is, again, similar to what TJ is saying, these are not law-abiding citizens that are doing this. The other thing, I had a conversation with you uh, yesterday uh, mm -hmm. because one of the first mass shootings that I became very involved with and concerned would happen in 1988, right here in the suburb of Winnetka, Illinois, where Lori Dang went in and killed a bunch of kids that day. And she had uh, a bunch of emotional issues. This young lady who also went into the school yesterday, I'm sorry, Monday, uh, it's been alleged that she had some emotional issues also. And I think if you go and look at it, you'll find that many of them were not uh, considered medically sane. Many of them had had all kinds of medications. Some of them had been institutionalized. The one that did the shooting in Arlington Heights on the 4th of July, same, same scenario. The problem is not that you need to keep the guns out of certain hands, but there needs to be some kind of way to deter this, to deter them from being able to buy these uh, weapons of mass destruction. That just like Dr. Jackson said, there is no reason a civilian should be allowed or be able to, or would he or she need to purchase those weapons, those types of weapons. Moreover, I know you can have things, because again, I'm, I live in Chicago, been in Chicago virtually all my life. I know you can buy any kind of gun you want to on the streets of Chicago. But one thing that drives up the price, and all, as well as the avail availability, is supply and demand. Because these people are doing business. It's people like, I'm not gonna say me, because I don't sit around and say, oh my God, oh my God, we don't know what to do. Or, no, no, I know what to do. And I don't sit on my butt and not do anything. I participated in many organizations, worked with many politicians, worked with many causes. And I did it selfishly, I will admit, because I had a black son growing up. I had two, two black daughters growing up. I have grandchildren. So I know I can't depend on the kids or somebody else to keep my family safe. I think that's ignorant and ridiculous. So you have to be involved and you have to stay involved. So I can tell you changing the rules on how you purchase guns, as well as having legislation that forbids certain types of guns to be owned by people. And if you raise the price and have the price if you fix it where it's so expensive to have, they're not going to even buy it easily. Oh, yeah, they'll still pay $4,500 for a gun that they probably could have gotten $500 for. But the fact all of them are not going to be able to buy the $4,500 gun because they're not going to have access to that kind of money. It's, it's, not, it's not a whole lot that needs to change. But the problem is the legislators, as well as the NRA and the other people who are as profitable, it's profitable for the, somebody who's always making money, even when there's a tragedy. So when you're talking about changing something, it's not about making a better law where you're safer. You have to also follow the money trail and you have to be able to show them that it's worth that loss of money or that no dollar amount can be put on the loss of a child, a grandchild, a wife, a husband, those six people who died on Monday, just like all the others, that was somebody's children. Those were their grandchildren, maybe even a great grand. That was somebody's husband. The gentleman that the custodian that died 
He was only 61. He was the father of seven. So that means his children no longer have a father. That's his right. wife no longer has a husband. His grandchildren no longer have a grandfather. Until you can make these people understand and see the human side of this outweighs the dollar amount. And when you can get people, and I'm not the one no shade, but I am, our ages and below to stop sitting up talking about it and get off their asses and do something about it. Participate. Because you're, you're right, you're not safe. Because just like yeah. it happened, what was that in Ohio when they went to the grocery store? Mm -hmm. And the guy came in there and shot down, tw what, 12 of them while mm -hmm. they were in the grocery store? Mm -hmm. I can say pretty much everybody on here tonight has been in the store. It can happen in Dunkin' Donuts. It can happen in Mariano's. It can happen in Jewel's. It can happen in Burger King. Yep, yeah. it all depends on the person. And as long as as long as you continue to act like it's somebody else's problem, which they do, and I don't think there's the, the girl's sexuality has anything to do with it. When mm. there are people who are straight, again, she said she wanted to die. That's the thing I tell everybody. Know the whole story. I like the fact, Doctor Jackson, you said you were listening to the story. She texts a friend and told that person she wanted to die today. She didn't care anymore. She mm. wanted to die. So what did the friend mind, do? What did the friend do? The friend contacted the sheriff's department. Okay. The sheriff's department told her somebody would get back in touch with her. They did not get back in touch with her till five hours after oh, the wow. shooting so, had occurred. Yeah. Okay. So that department, that department needs to, we need to address that department because well, they, they didn't they, do well, what they they're going to do. They're, they're going to address it, I'm, I'm sure, and put something else in place. You talked about the fact, Dr. Jackson talked about the fact how quickly the police responded. I was glad to hear that because they learned from the, the, the horrific accident of shooting in Texas because mm -hmm. those fools were there and wouldn't go into school. <laughs> yep. They were standing outside. Yes, they were. And again, yes, were. I'm not I'm not really criticizing them because those guys are faced with death every day. Yes. And again, it's one thing when you may have death when you're doing a traffic stop, but it's another thing to know that somebody is in there with firepower greater than yours, who has the vantage point of seeing where you are and you can't see where they are. And by right. the time you notice who they where they are, they can take you out in an instant. I understand hmm. that. Okay. standing out there but it's their job was to go in at least to attempt to go in and i saw the footage that was on the police officers that were there and they didn't hesitate to go in they really didn't oh, I, I think they should have i think they should have had on more armor though because all of them had on like baseball cap like things they should have had something on their head a helmet because that she could easily shot him in the head and took him out yeah, yeah that's their body, true. they had the vest on, but their head, she could have slugged them in the head and it would, it would have been all over. But she said she wanted to die. So yeah. she went back, I guess, to what she knew. She was also a student once at that school. And so wow. she went back with what was, what was what she knew. They had the doors locked. We talked about the fact Texas didn't lock their doors. They had their doors locked. She shot the glass out the doors. Oh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sandra has given us the history of this shooting. And I don't know, uh, Karen, you work in schools with students. Naima, you work in schools with students. Tell us a little bit about, have, I mean, you're a teacher. So don't you recognize students that seem to have some kind of a character flaw or maybe they're emotional and, and not erratic that day, or I don't know, but as teachers, do you see these students? Do you see the emotions that they are displaying? Would, would, you, would you have recognized um, this, this student's issues you know that this student had an issue that day. You, you Wanda, she was Wanda. She wasn't yes. a current student. The woman was twenty eight years old. Okay. Yeah. She attended the school when she was a kid. This was a Presbyterian oh. school. Right. She attended the school as a kid. This was an adult that went. So back she came to, back. She came back. So she was. Well, mad. she went back to a place that was familiar with her. 
Mm-hmm. And maybe something happened to her while she was at that place. Maybe or maybe not. She said she wanted to die. So, I mean, when a person is, is in that mindset, you don't know what they are thinking because you're not supposed to. Because, again, that's illogical and we don't expect the logical person to get it. But the fact that she went and she had a manifesto listing the malls and a couple of other places that she never got to. So she was like, if I'm not successful here, I'm like, I got a plan A. Here's my plan A. Here's my plan B. Here's my plan C. My D, wow. my E. Mm-hmm. Okay, ladies. Well, you know, the thing is, is we have to remember we're in the 21st century, you know, and when we talk about this, it's hor- horrific for us, but people like TJ, this is this is a norm for his life because of the, the time he's been living. So, you know, in my family, there's what, five generations living. And so what they know today is completely different than what we had. You know, it's, this when it did happen in our time, it was a huge thing, but we wouldn't have heard, we may not have heard about it. Remember a lot of uh, um, schools, I know in the, in suburban areas, they can cover up a whole lot of stuff. You know, you don't, unless you have people who are going into schools because to, to put it on the kids is so unfair. You know, these children literally have um, three generations over them. They've got all of these influences. Uh, the times have changed. People wouldn't have even sold kids guns back then. You know, our gangbangers in our day were not, our gangbangers made sure our kids made sure the boys act right in school. You know, if they didn't have no parents, you could go to the leader of the gang and the leader of the gang would straighten him out. When he got to school, he'd be all right. That's a whole new different world. So to try to hold this this new group of hum- humanity uh, up to standards that they never knew anything about, you know. So we have to look at the fact that we're living in a, a, a culturally incompetent culture. It doesn't have it. It's losing its civility, you know. And so, you know, there's no... Um, this has a lot to do with the, the political and the religious banning together and not really paying attention to the systematic changes because this is a systematic thing. This is not stuff that's going to happen. We, we wouldn't have known it anyway um, back in our day, you know. So it, it how to stop it, first, we, you know, I really appreciate the fact that I see Chicago Public Schools trying to address it, you know. Um, I got in on the end of what you were talking about regarding the sexuality of this person. Sexuality was nothing like this when we were coming up because now it's a, it's a weapon. It's used for everything. This was not the decision of the younger people. It is the, um, the root word for ignorance is to ignore, you know, ignore what was happening to children, you know, we know Chicago's always been a sanctuary city. In many ways, I was an orphan. I went to 10 schools when I was a kid, but it was safe for me, you know? It was safe for me. So why isn't it safe? You know, so I think that it's important, you know, in our situation to, to talk about or explore the origin of the problem. And that's basically what you were saying, Wanda. Yes. What make them do this, you know, um, understanding about the binary laws because those are policies now. You yeah. can't do anything about that. Um, you know, the trans LGBT community, those yeah. are human beings. They are protected just like we should be protected. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I'm, so I'm looking forward to um, more dialogues like this because we have to educate ourselves to understand that group because a lot of people will say, well, we, you can't just hang it on a TJ and hang it on that generation to fix something that they don't know how it got started, you know? That's right. That's right. Naima, I'd be interested in hearing your position. Well, I've been a teacher and I've seen when young people are living in distressful situations. Mm-hmm. And I agree, ignorance Yeah, means to ignore, to ignore what you see and hear and ignore the obvious decision that needs to be made, which is to remove all the guns. There are societies in this world where no one has a gun. 
Yeah. America is based on such fear and they play on the fears. And then I believe it was said, I don't know if it was Sandra or someone else that said about follow the money, uh, who's benefiting no matter right. who gets shot. There are people who make money, everybody from the, the mortuaries and, and of course the gun manufacturers right. first and foremost and everybody in between but at some point there has to be a collective decision that our lives are worth more than money and i agree that this is a cycle but it's a cycle that's coming to an end and it's coming to an end by the generation who's been most affected by it we have children growing up kindergartners that yes. are having drills on on uh, active shooter drills that's that's unheard of our day when we have fire drills you know if the building catches on fire now they got to mm -hmm. have a drill about if somebody comes in with a gun yes so they're going to grow up realizing that this should never have been something they should have been subjected to they will have the courage to do what we do not have the courage to do right. which is to remove all of the guns from the society if you just treat people right then you don't have people trying to kill you it's real simple so, <laughs> so this is the generation, the ones that's growing up in the worst horrific eras of violence will then have the common sense to remove the guns from the society, remove the power of the gun manufacturers to send these guns out in the, in the most depressed areas where people are living desperate. And then the entertainers that are being paid to glamorize the violence, we will also see, that generation will also see that all of this is what has endangered their lives and they're gonna choose life over profits and stupidity. And they're gonna change the culture in which we live because they've been victims of it. So it's, <laughs> it's taking this tragedy and others before the change comes. And it really comes down to a number. How many deaths will it take before the society chooses to remove the gun? And it will happen. It's yeah. just, the, the number is up to us. How many of us do we want to see slaughtered before we finally have the courage to say, that's it, no more, get rid of all of it, ban it, make it illegal. If you manufacture these guns, you go to prison because you're killing the society and we're not going to allow it. It just mm -hmm. takes us getting to that point of, of fed up itness where we decide. And it's up to us on how much we're going to take. Now, one thing we did, we started a movement basically uh, called Women Against Violent Entertainment and we got a Facebook page and of course the acronym WAVE, you know, but we, we got to start a new wave, a new wave of thought. <laughs> What's but the name of that organization we, again? We've taken some steps on- WAVE. On first, yes, WAVE, Women Against Violent Entertainment. Okay. And what we have to decide to do as mothers, as parents, as those who are raising children, is to stop feeding the violence that's being made to appear glamorous to our children. We have the power to, or to not bring in the violent video games, not have the violent glorifying gangster life music. We have the power to not bring in the violent TV shows, even if it's the, the, the five o'clock news, anything yeah. that's graphically getting our children used to seeing violence as normal. We have the power to stop normalizing it. And we have to take the, the power that we have and use it for our good and not think, well, there's nothing we can do or they're gonna see it somewhere. No, they don't have to see it in my house. That's I don't right. have to make it be part of their psyche because you know what? When you watch violence, it becomes a part of your own vibration and you actually attract it to you. That's. That's a metaphysical reality. You ever met, met somebody, they always get robbed, always getting beat up. Yes, always. yes. Because the more you immerse yourself in it, the more you project that vibration, the more you attract it to you. And there's some Come people on, that Naima. never happens to.